Did you uh, did you get a chance to take a shit yet? Not yet. Not yet. We'll keep it brief then for you. Yeah. Come on. Listen, that was a big victory over a tough guy, and you got tested. You know, having to go to his world. So racking up a victory like that, how, how do you feel after it? Oh, I feel good. Um, he fought just like we thought he was going to fight. Um, the submission defense by him holding my neck like that, and that's what we practice all week and all really the last two weeks. And just trying to keep my 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 elbow tucked and turn into him because we seen him do that bulldog choke. You don't want to get tapped out nothing like that. So I couldn't I couldn't tap. I can't imagine the game plan included any bit of going to the ground and you know getting in a submission battle with him. But uh, but you but you did. Obviously you were down there for quite a bit. What was going through your head at that time? Was there any panic or concern? Did you feel like you were okay? What was it? Um, I was wishing there was crowds in the stands because I was snorting, ugh, like making funny noise while you're choking the hell out of my neck. And I was like, damn, I'm making too much noise. I wonder if they could hear it on TV. So I can't tap like that. And I know my kids watching. They're going to tease me forever. Well, you showed some nice escapes, some nice sweeps. I mean, you got out of some bad positions. So, I mean, did you know you had jiu-jitsu skills at that level, or is this something that just kind of really developed in this camp, or is this something you've always had? No, I knew I had. I'm one of the baddest blue belts in Texas, <laughs> not in the world. I probably am the baddest blue belt in the world. Right, Joe? Yeah, right. I ain't got a strike tonight, so we'll see. Keep on asking me. You could tell on that squeeze at the end of the first round, man, he was giving it everything he had. His face was grimacing. How, how tight was it? Were you in danger at all? Was that a, a tough check for you there? Um, it, it was pretty tight. Um, at first, I thought that said it was 30 seconds left. Then I heard 40 seconds left. Then I heard 35 seconds left. I'm like, damn. And I started looking at him. Then I looked at her, Dean. And then I heard the 10-second class. I said, okay, thank God, shit. And that was it. I, was, I didn't want to get back in that position again, so that's why I came back out in the second round and wanted to finish him. Let's say incredible finish to start the second round. I mean, were, were you planning on that? Did it come in the moment? I mean, did you scout it like, hey, I know I can land this leaping knee on him, or, or did that just come to you at the time? What, what was the sequence? Um, I, I really wasn't tired in the second round, so I knew that um, – that he was tired because I seen him relaxing his legs on the cage. And I was like, oh, hold up, what are you doing? I ain't never seen nobody do that before. So I thought he gave up. And I said, OK, he doing exactly what um, my coach said he would do, like gas himself out trying to get a submission. So I said, OK, he's gone. So I just got to um, pick my shots. Afterwards, you said you're, you're not going to take another fight until you get down into the 250s, lose a little bit of weight. I mean, we always hear that, that you, you've lost weight, you're in good, but I mean, do you, you really feel the need to get that low before you fight again? Yeah, I believe so. You know, um, I owe it to the fans. I owe it to everyone that support me. You know, um, I got to really take it more serious than what I have been. And dealing with this COVID, it's like my coach, he caught COVID. My strength and conditioning caught COVID. And so it's like, we got to take it more serious. So, um, so we're going to just wait and see after the election and stuff like that. You know, maybe the COVID go away all of a sudden. So we'll see. The last thing for me, uh, what does make sense for you as the next opponent? I mean, you're up at the top of the division. Uh, some people have been, been saying your name a little bit. Uh, but, but what makes sense for you as a matchup? Um, you know, Curtis Blaves makes sense. Um, Nugano makes sense. Um, Overeem makes sense. And that's just about it. If we just see what happened next week and see who else makes sense after after that match. But um I for sure had to get down um 15, 20 pounds to feel comfortable in there. And you you really would see something scary out of me, for sure. Hey Derek. You look fairly lean at two sixty five. How much of a lifestyle change is it gonna be for you to get down twenty pounds? Um I've really been eating whatever I want and just been training um a lot longer than 30 minutes this camp. So we've been just training a lot more. That's so all. I've just still been eating bad, still been eating Popeyes and stuff like that, and just been training more. Do you anticipate yourself being even more explosive, even more aggressive at, at a lower weight? Is that why you want to get down there? Oh, for sure. I'll be a lot quicker, a lot more agile, a lot more aggressive and everything. 
Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but you mentioned his name. Curtis Blades actually called you out right after the fight. He says he's got dibs on fighting you next. Is, is that a sort of guy that you're interested in, or would you rather maybe a guy who can meet you on the feet because you just spent so long practicing for a grappler? <laughs> nah, that'd be perfect to fight Curtis next. Um, so all he's going to do is try to grab me and hold me and try to win by decision. It's not going to try to finish me. If he do try to finish me, that's fine. But um, I believe I could take Curtis down and punish him on the ground. Yeah, put that on the headlines. Make the headlines. Go ahead. Type it. That's headlines right there. I'm going to take Curtis Blaze down and finish him. Okay, thanks for the headline. And lastly, <laughs> uh, you gave an impressive list of sponsors at the end of your interview. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't any that you missed out. Oh, um, yeah, I did miss some out. And I appreciate Grindhouse Strength and Conditioning. And um, Main Street, my coach, head Jim, and Gracie Baja. I appreciate Henzo Gracie. I appreciate y'all, you know, they helped me on the ground and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I'm pretty sure I forgot somebody. Yeah, but they'll come back to me later. Derek, Jim Greesauver, cage side seat. Just want to ask you, congrats on the win. Um, what has it been like for you in the COVID era? Because obviously you have a lot of people who look up to you too, and you care about your community. You're always making people laugh have to find different ways to train and different ways to prepare and not knowing with the fights, but being able to be in there and compete and be in there with people watching who might have some, you know, some problems, some things going on, to be a role model and to be in there just kind of carrying that torch for people in your community. Yeah, so um, going through the COVID, really got to listen. If they tell you you got to wear a mask, wear a mask. You know, they tell you you can't come in to this facility or whatever without wearing a mask or touching people, stay six feet apart, just do it. You know, um, me dealing with this is like, I just had to listen to whatever they told me to do because of my kids. It's like, God forbid for anything happening to my kids, my wife and family and stuff like that, if I get them sick by me being stubborn, then it'll be pissed, I'll be pissed for sure. Being a guy who came into the fight game trying to be a boxer, now you have the most knockouts in UFC heavyweight history. Did you ever think you'd be there? And what does it feel like to know that you came in and you've accomplished that already? Yeah, that's crazy. You know, no, I still can't believe that, that um, I got the most knockouts. And I don't know, it's just a crazy feeling, you know, because all the great heavyweights before me, you know, seen um, like Shane Corwin just knocking everybody out in the first few minutes of the fight. And watching Brock Lesnar and Cain Velasquez, all those guys for all these years, then seeing that they never had accomplished what I did. And just like, I just really got to be humble about it, you know, and got to keep on going because I still got a lot left in the tank. What are you going to do these next couple of weeks? Any celebrations, any trips, anything like that? Um, We're going to go to Austin, probably by Deer Lease out there. I don't know if you're a hunter or not like that, so I'm um, interested in buying a couple of hundred acres in Austin, Texas. Nice. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Good night. Appreciate it. Yeah, Monster don't sponsor me. We try to reach out to them and try to sponsor me um, before the DC fight. And I couldn't get no call, no show. So that's the reason why I didn't have Monster up there. But um, shout out to Bang. If Bang want to sponsor me, holler at your boy. Swang and Bang, baby. I'm out. <laughs>